victory for Obamacare. Let's play hardball. Good evening, I'm Steve Kornacki, in for Chris Matthews. A huge win for President Obama at the Supreme Court today. In a 6-3 to three decision, the court rejected a challenge to the president's signature legislative achievement, the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. Supporters of the law cheered outside the courthouse as the decision came down. A few blocks away at the White House, the president also celebrating. The White House photographer Pete Souza capturing these photos of the president's reaction after hearing the rule. And a few moments later, he spoke in the Rose Garden. Today, after more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, after multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. The court rejected the argument brought by opponents of the law that the language in the bill dealing with subsidies to low-income Americans was meant only to apply to consumers in the 16 states that set up their own exchanges. That would have taken away the financial benefit to more than 6 million people in the other 34 states that are using the federal exchanges. Supporters also argued that removing those subsidies would essentially cripple the law. Now, for the second time in three years, the Supreme Court has sided with with the White House and saved Obamacare. And once again, it was the conservative chief justice, John Roberts, appointed by George W. Bush, who wrote that majority opinion. NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams joins us now. So, Pete Williams, uh, the president says this is it. Finally, after all these court battles, this is the law of the land for good. Is he right? Well, that's going to be up to Congress in part. If there is a Republican president and the Congress decides to try to veto it or, or do away with it, that it, it might not get veto if there's a Republican in the White House. There are other legal challenges pending. There's one about whether the bill started on the wrong side of the Congress, given that only uh, the House can write tax writing provisions, given that the Supreme Court said three years ago that it's a tax. Uh, but this does certainly seem to have a different character than the decision that came out three years ago that bailed out Obamacare on constitutional grounds. You'll recall that that decision was all over the place. Uh, every justice seemed to go off in a different direction. This one is different in, in f first of all, it's a six to three instead of a five to four decision with Justice Kennedy joining last time. And remember, he was so strongly against the court's ruling three years ago. And secondly, the court seems to sort of accept the broad premise of Obamacare here. It doesn't really tinker with it. It's just this question of who is entitled to federal subsidies that the make insurance cheaper. Conservative opponents had said they were not for everybody. They were only for people who bought the insurance in one of those 16 states that set up their own marketplace. But the court said today that's wrong, uh, joined by Justice Kennedy and the liberals. What he basically said is three parts of the law are interlocking. Insurance companies can't deny coverage for pre-existing conditions. Everybody has to get insurance to make sure there's enough risk. Everybody spreads the risk. And then the subsidies to make it for more affordable. So if you take the subsidies away, the court said the system collapses, and that can't be what Congress meant. Now, the dissent here was quite bitter. Antonin Scalia said the court was twisting the law's words, very imaginatively interpreting it, that the, the phrase established by the state for exchanges meant what it said. And he said it's clear the Supreme Court the rule here is save Obamacare at whatever cost. All right, Pete Williams, NBC News legal correspondent. Thank you for joining us there. Appreciate that. The president had two speeches prepared to go today, depending on which way the court ruled. According to one White House official, the other version was returned to the chief speechwriter with a note attached to it from the president. It read, didn't need this one, brother. In his delivered remarks, the president said it is a good day for America. And he said the health care law is already woven into the fabric of America. This law is now helping tens of millions of Americans. And they've told me that it has changed their lives for the better. This law is working. And it's going to keep doing just that. Five years in, this is no longer about a law. This is not about the Affordable Care Act as legislation or Obamacare as a political football. This is health care in America. 
I'm joined now by David Seamus, the White House political director. So, David, I mean, let, let's talk about this in, in big picture terms here, about the legacy of this president, of this administration, of this era of American history. I mean, this is a president who ran for office in 2008, promising to do big things, who has been stymied by Congress for so much of his presidency. But he did, in year two, manage to get this through. And today, with this court ruling, this is a statement about what his legacy is going to be, isn't it? Steve, this is why we do the work that we do. Uh, this is why that after 100 years of trying and then a very tough legislative fight up here in Washington, the president made the decision to make sure that when he had this opportunity, he could finally deliver on the promise of health care as a right rather than a privilege. And so, as he said very eloquently today, Steve, after 50 repeal votes, two Supreme Court opinions, and a presidential election, it's time for us now to move on what's really important, which is the 6 million people who can rest a little bit easier, the 16 million people who have coverage, the lowest uninsurance rate ever recorded, the slowest health care cost growth in 50 years. And if you just look at 2014, uh, employer-based premiums rising at the lowest level that they have since 1999. At the end of the day, this is why the president ran, is to make sure that he was helping people. And today's judgment by the court uh, is just another uh, opportunity for us to now really move forward on this. This is an issue, too, we, we can think beyond his presidency, assuming this thing stays on the books for the, for the future, obviously a legacy item. But within his presidency, you look at the political toll this has taken on this president and on his party. You think of the 2010 midterm tsunami for Republicans. 2014, just last fall, you had Republicans out there saying, we want to repeal this thing, we want to repeal this thing, another big year for them. You take polls now, you still find, you just ask the question, of Obamacare itself, you still find a very polarizing issue. When you look back at the politics of the last five years and the fact this is still, at least until today, a contested issue in American politics, do you look at this and say there are things we could and should have done differently? You know, Steve, the reason it took 100 years to get this done is because it's hard. The president's got the sign on his desk that an old colleague, David Axelrod, uh, essentially was the muse for that said hard things are hard. Uh, and when you go into this debate uh, to really fundamentally uh, transform or help to transform the health care system, uh, this is what you see in terms of the political fight. But here is the reality. As we now move into the next two years, and as the 16 million people who have coverage grow every single year, and as it becomes fully embedded into the fabric of American society, I think that what you began to hear today with Republicans up on Capitol Hill, some of them saying, well, maybe we should try a different approach, while others are simply saying repeal and replace. Steve, that is going to, the repeal and replace is going to become increasingly untenable as this really gets woven even deeper into the fabric of American society. And so, again, this is why we do the work that we do to make sure that we help as many people with a little time that we have here holding these positions. All right, David Seamus, the White House political director, thanks for your time tonight. Appreciate that. Now, thanks, one Steve. of the leading proponents of the law, the head of Families USA Advocacy Group, Ron Pollack, was in the courtroom today. He later emerged from the courthouse with a triumphant fist pump. You're looking at it there. He's accompanied by Gwen Jackson, another supporter whose family has benefited from the law. And Ron Pollack joins us now along with MSNBC contributor Dr. Zeke Emanuel, who was an advisor to the White House on health care. Uh, so, Ron, let me start with you. You were joined today by somebody who's benefited directly from this law. This court ruling today in real terms to real people, what does it mean? Well, it means that they now have the peace of mind that the health coverage they couldn't get before the Affordable Care Act became law, now they know that they're getting significant help, they're getting substantial subsidies that make health coverage affordable, and it won't be taken away. And so we have talked to countless people, many of whom we've brought to Washington to tell their own stories. Gwen was one of them. And they all say that if it wasn't for the Affordable Care Act, they would be uninsured. Many of them have major health care problems, like Gwen's husband. Uh, he had a significant tumor. Uh, and if he did not have health coverage, 
he could not have gotten the care he needed. He ultimately got the care he needed. If he uh, paid for it out of pocket, it would have cost $195,000. But because the Affordable Care Act was there and she was able to afford the premiums, she got, uh, the family got the help. And so there are lots of people who tonight, I think, can breathe a big sigh of relief. Plenty of reaction today from opponents of the Affordable Care Act. Speaker of the House John Boehner vowing to continue to try to dismantle Obamacare. The problem uh, with Obamacare is still fundamentally the same. The law is broken. It's raising costs for American families. Uh, it's raising costs for small businesses. And uh, it's just fundamentally broken. Zeke Emanuel, is there anything to that critique? He's saying it's putting a burden on businesses. There are families with rising costs. That, we're still hearing that line from John Boehner tonight. Is there anything to that critique? Uh, I don't really think so. After five years of being uh, in place, uh, no matter what metric you measure, access, as you heard, 16 million more people getting coverage. Uh, the quality uh, is improving in the system. The costs of the health care system actually are at historic lows. Uh, premium rises have been low. Uh, part of the problem is that employers are shifting more costs to workers, and we do have to protect uh, more employees. But the general, the Affordable Care Act itself has really been a tremendous positive influence on the system. And when I travel the country and look at health systems, they're trying to solve problems, they're trying to improve their quality, reduce their costs. We're not there yet. We're not out of the woods. There's going to be plenty of more work to do. But the Affordable Care Act was a pivotal catalyst in getting everyone to focus on improving the health care system. I think Boehner, the fact that he couldn't elaborate on what the problems were, just tells you that there's really no factual basis behind that charge. Um, the Affordable Care Act is good, and now, you know, we know that it won't be repealed. I mean, uh, John Roberts was pretty clear, no more frivolous lawsuits, and no more uh, fear that an administration might come in and change this rule because the IRS was the source of the ruling uh, in this ambiguous case. And uh, I think he pretty much put it to rest. Uh, for good. Yeah, Ron, so you were in the courtroom uh, today. You know, we don't have cameras in there, unfortunately, but I mean, we had this uh, this very bitter, vitriolic uh, dissent that was read by Antonin Scalia. You had Roberts using language, uh, as Zeke is saying there, a lot more, I think, firm and emphatic than people were thinking. What was the reaction it like in that courtroom? Paint the picture for us, because we couldn't be there. Well, first of all, it was a little surprising, even though I was in the courtroom, most of us actually expected that the decision would come down tomorrow. Uh, uh, Don Varelli, who's the Solicitor General, who I spoke to just before the court proceeded, he thought that it was going to come down tomorrow. But I have to say that uh, the Chief Justice actually articulated the opinion exactly the way Don Varelli actually wrote in the brief. You have to look at the entire statute, not just at a few words. Uh, what was really interesting is when Justice Scalia started reading his, uh, his dissent, and he was sitting immediately next to the Chief Justice, you know, he, and, and it was a pretty scolding uh, dissent. Uh, the Chief Justice was looking straight ahead until uh, Justice Scalia called it SCOTUS care as opposed to Obamacare. Uh, I have to say, I thought the Chief Justice really nailed this uh, opinion very well. He understood that there is what we call a three-legged stool. One leg is you protect people with pre-existing health conditions so that insurers don't discriminate against them. Secondly, to make sure that insurance pools are not just made up of older, sicker people so that premiums would rise, you have a requirement that people buy insurance. And the third part of the leg is you got to help people and you provide subsidies for them. So if you took one of those legs out from under uh, the stool, the stool would collapse. And the Chief Justice really understood that. He went through the history of states right. around the country that tried to do this, and they failed because they didn't have all three legs of the stool. All right, Ron Pollock, Zeke Emanuel, thanks for your time tonight. Appreciate that.